Greetings, salutations, and welcome to Sports Like the Sports Television Program for the High Plains of West Texas and Eastern New Mexico. I'm your host, Doc Elder, and because pro football has returned to the TV airwaves tonight, we're deliberately not going to talk about football. In fact, we're not going to talk about any sport that involves the ball. Instead, we're going to have Albert Flynn from Greyhound Rodeo. We're going to have Josh Harden from Greyhound Cross Country. I'll finish up with an overtime, but as always, I'll start out with an Eastern recap. Greyhound men's soccer opened up the season last weekend. They beat Adams State. They lost to Fort Lewis. Greyhound's women's soccer, they started out the season last weekend. They were tied with Adams State at the end of regulation. They were tied with Fort Lewis at the end of regulation. Greyhound Volleyball, they started out the season a tournament in Wichita Falls, Texas. They won one match, they lost three. And Greyhound Football had a really exciting game. They beat New Mexico Highlands by a score of 28 to 26. Eastern is now 34 and 13 all time against the Cowboys. Well, that has been your Eastern recap. So what we'll do is we'll clear this out and I'll bring in my first guest, Albert Flynn, right now. Welcome back to Sports Look, and an honor and a privilege to bring to the set of Sports Look my favorite coach at Eastern New Mexico University, Albert Flynn from Greyhound Rodeo. And coach, welcome back to Sports Look. Thank you, Doc. Appreciate it. Well, coach, you are my favorite coach because I've been here for 29 years now, seen a few rodeos, but you always tell me something I do not know about the sport. So you are just a wealth of knowledge. Uh, well, maybe, maybe this time. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I think there's a lot about the sport that I still have to master. But uh, we're bringing you in specifically this week because one week from tonight, it will be September 14th. It'll be the first day of College Days Rodeo. And that is just one of the great events here on the High Plains. It, it really is. You know, we'll have something over 600 contestants from 17 universities and colleges and all from Texas uh, except for Hobbs and New Mexico Junior College is a co-sponsor with us now to help us produce and have the, the workforce tanks to put on a rodeo of this size. And for people that may just vaguely know that there is a sport called rodeo, what is all involved in hosting your own rodeo? Well, to start with, uh, we, you know, you, you spend the time to get ready, and then you have your stock contractor come in, and, and then you get ready for your events, and and these events will be Thursday and Friday and Saturday nights, and then the overload that's there runs Friday morning and Saturday morning, and it starts at 9 and runs till about one thirty or 2, and that takes care of all the extra runs. You know, there'll be... 200 breakaway ropers and 160 barrel racers and probably 100 calf ropers and 100 team ropers. And we'll still have 40 bronc riders and bull riders and probably 25 bareback riders. So uh, it just takes a lot of time to run that many. And we run the the long run uh, first and what to call the, the first go. And then the short goes Saturday night. and which is probably the best watching there is in the region because all of the ones that have qualified in the top 10, well, they've done something to get there. And, uh, you, you know, to pick 10 girls out of the 200, and they're going to need to be, and this year they might get to be 2-8 and make it back to the short round. Uh, but besides the events, it takes a lot of stock livestock. Oh, it takes over 100 breakaway calves and another 50 tie down calves and probably another 50 team roping cattle. And uh, the truckloads of horses and bulls come in there. There's at least two big truckloads. And, uh, and Mitch Terrell from TNT Rodeo does a wonderful job for us. He was putting the rodeo on when David Browder was here and and I've just continued to use him, and 
easy to get along with, brings good stock, and able to put on a good rodeo. Coach, uh, like I said in the beginning, I love having you on because I always learn something new, and I'm going to learn two new things because just as you were talking, two questions occurred to me that I've never asked you in all the years that I've had you on Sports League. First of all, I presume that for the individuals who bring their horses, they're responsible for feeding their horses. Correct. Who supplies and where does the forage come from for the animals that are the ones that are going to be roped and tied? Uh, that's furnished by the rodeo team. Any of your rodeo furnishes the uh, hay for the uh, calves and the bulls and hay for the horses. They do bring their own grain to feed, but we furnish a, probably a 120 small bales of hay and, and probably 10 round bales for the buck and horses. So yeah. if you don't mind my asking, and if you'd rather not say, I totally understand, but how much does it cost? I mean, there's the expression, and that ain't hay, but it, obviously it, it is hay that you have to provide. And what, what kind of numbers are we talking about? The total rodeo is about 55000 uh, you know, we furnish the pay for the judges and the announcers and furnish them rooms at the motels and same way the pickup men and, and the stock contractor. And and then I think this year, a small bale of hay is $13 a bale and them round bales are 125 to 150 But uh, by the time you pay the stock contractor and your advertisement, and everything that goes with it, the awards and stuff, it's this year it'll be close to 55000 So yeah. does the price of hay fluctuate very much from year to year, depending on rainfall, or is it a pretty stable? Can you budget and, and know that that's probably how much it's going to cost? No, it depends on, right now, the cost of water and fertilizer and everything for the farmers have really made the hay prices go up. We used to buy those small bales for $9, and and they're 13, and round bales used to be $80, and the stock contractor used to be 25 instead of 35. And, and fortunately, I had been in that business, and I know the cost of him getting here and he's not being overpaid. It's, so another question that occurs to me, uh, we talked about the fact that judges will be provided who are the judges? Where do they come from? And, and how have you identified the fact that these are the people you want judging the College Days Rodeo? This year's been a, a little bit of a struggle because a lot of the judges that we normally have, they're off judging pro rodeos like Albuquerque and, and uh, Omaha and Little Rock and some of them that's going on at this time. Uh, we have, a, so we went down and we picked up a couple of men that have been judging the high school rodeos in New Mexico and Texas for probably 30 years, and they know what they've been doing. They, they're qualified judges. Uh, they've just been committed to the high school program. And fortunately, there wasn't a New Mexico high school rodeo and a Region 3 Texas high school rodeo this weekend, so the weekend of our rodeo. And uh, Tommy Zant comes over from... Odessa that's uh, been uh, judging these college rodeos. and They've asked us to come up with three judges now. We used to have two, but we're now furnishing three. That was going to be a follow-up question I was going to ask. So you yeah. cleverly anticipated where mm -hmm. I was going to go. Uh, you mentioned the fact uh, that there are announcers. Uh, a young man by the name of Farron Lucero, uh, for many years, uh, was the, is Farron going to be back this yes, year? Yes, he is. Yeah, does a great job for us. An alumni, proud to be a Greyhound, does a wonderful job supporting the university. And, and uh, we have another young man that uh, Farron likes for him to bring his music. And, and the only thing I have to do is try to control the volume so the music. <laughs> doesn't get so loud that you can't hear the announcer. Mm -hmm. 
it was pretty cool because Farron was actually a good friend of my older son, Cam's, who was a broadcast journalism major here and actually worked in this very building with Farron. So mm -hmm. that's cool. Uh, so, Coach, let's talk a little bit about the individuals that are going to be the ones to watch for. Uh, who are the returners that we should keep our eyes on during the College Days Rodeo? Who are promising newcomers? Uh, the newcomers, uh, I run across a girl in Gillette that unfortunately is going to go to school at Tech and is a pretty good goat tire. Uh, the girl that was won the region in the goat tying here last year would be a sophomore from uh, Frank Phillips and she'll be back. And, and uh, the girl that uh, Frank Phillips has a pretty, pretty nice girls women's team. Uh, the men's team, there's a number of these boys that have been out on a pro rodeo this summer. Uh, 20, 21 year old kids that, that are all coming back to school. And uh, they're, uh, there's a young man by the name of Peterson out of Montana that goes to school at Clarendon that uh, probably wins something at the college finals last year. And, and uh, there's a, a number of those calf ropers that are, that'll be here. Uh, we've had, most of our team is all back from last year. We lost a few few girls. Uh, I don't think we lost any boys. Uh, the girls that was on our team last year that won our team trophy right here at home, uh, they're all back. And Tarleton Tech, uh, Clarendon, Frank Phillips, uh, Snyder, they're all going to be tough again. Uh, Clarendon recruited the young man from high school that was the national high school all-around cowboy, rides bareback horses and bulls, and rides pretty well. So they're going to be loaded again with rough stock riders. But as you correctly pointed out, the team that won the championship last year would be the Eastern New Mexico University women. So uh, what what's going to be the best event uh, for the women? What's going to be the best event for the guys? To the guys, I, I would guess that the the team roping should be the best. Uh, Coy McBride, the boy from Canada, and he went home this summer and spent a lot of time roping with some other people. And, and uh, if he'll rope as good here as he did in this summer in the calf roping, he'll, he'll have a chance to get himself to Casper. Uh, we have some freshman boys. It's going to take them a couple of years to make that transition. Uh, we have a couple of boys from South Dakota that team wrote pretty well. Uh, Blaze, Stefan, and Bo Dean. And, and then we have uh, uh, some girls that, Sacy and Shaden Moore and, and Quinn, uh, Leslie, and Greeley. Uh, really, I stepped up. And so uh, they're all back. And, and then we picked up uh, Bo's little sister, uh, Daisy, and that girl ropes really well. So uh, we think uh, if the coach can put the right one on the team at the, at the right rodeo, we'll have a chance to win something. Well, Coach, I wish you the very best of luck. Uh, just an honor to have you on the show, and uh, let's hope that we can bring you on in the ensuing weeks and talk about another Greyhound Championship in Rodeo. Thank you, sir. Appreciate it. All right. Well, that is going to wrap up our first interview segment. So we'll clear the set and we'll bring in Josh Harden from Greyhound Cross Country right now. Welcome back to Sports Look, and an honor and a privilege to bring to the set of Sports Look the head coach of Greyhound Cross Country, Josh Harden. And coach, welcome back to Sports Look. Thank you. I appreciate you having me. When we had you on last year about this time, you were in your first year as the head coach of Greyhound Cross Country going into the second year. What's uh, going to be the same? What's going to be different this year? 
Uh, I guess so. One big difference is we're hosting the LSC championship. So, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's a yeah, minor little yeah, difference. Yeah. <laughs> last year was our first home meet, um, I think, and hosted over quite a while. Um, and this year we'll have a home meet as well as um, preparing to host a LSC championship. So it's going to be a, a new feel as well as with that branding move from Under Armour to Adidas. So it'll be a new look as well. So, you know, pretty exciting. Well, Coach, I'm a fine excuse for a sports guy because I honestly didn't realize that rotationally it was back to our year to host. So first and foremost, where are you going to host the meet? Where is it actually going to take place? So we're actually um, hosting around the uh, old track and old soccer field and uh, that field leading out, you know, towards the, the present house at over that main street and university. So um it's a, a we have already had a training 1K, 2K loop out there. Um, and now we're just kind of expanding on that and um, having the you know, physical play in the grounds. People kind of help us kind of niche in a, a cross country course, which is nice and flat. And, you know, it's it's great for for viewer friendly spectating. So it's it's, it's pretty exciting. And I was smiling and nodding because uh, during the COVID times, I, my good friend John Hauser, who is the uh, director of news services at, at Eastern Communication, he and I would go out and we'd socially distance. We'd you know get ourselves like four or five feet apart. Yeah. We ran on that, so I'm yeah. very familiar yeah. with that looping track. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's it's pretty solid. We have majority of the course kind of um, look the way the same way that trail did. Um, and it's, it's, it's awesome footing. I, I normally see people out there running every once in a while. So, um, it's definitely a place where we feel like it's going to be a fast course and it should be fun and, and viewer friendly to where you can see a lot of the race, even if you stood in one spot. So it's, we're excited about it. Oh yeah. I, I know exactly where I'm going to stand. Yeah. I, I, you can watch every square inch of that terrain. So that, yeah. that is yeah. really cool. Yeah. And you're going to have a tune up meet. Yes, we're going to host a, a home meet October 7th, um, just kind of a tune-up and a preview, um, just so we can kind of get the kinks out before the big meet. And um, I think it's it's going to be fairly exciting. We had a couple teams that are that are set to come, so it should be it should be a nice little preview. Well, I enjoyed your meet last year. You had it up at the uh, with the old golf yeah. course in in Clovis, yeah. but that wasn't really very user friendly because you, you could basically stand well, then you had to run all the way over to watch yeah. them make the loop. So yeah. this is going to be way cool. Oh yeah, definitely. Yeah. The Hillcrest course was challenging. <laughs> um, and also, you know, just to get, just to get people out, you know, I think with having it on campus, you know, right across from the main campus is, is going to be awesome, you know, to be able to have the students literally, they can walk across the bridge and, and come watch the race. So I think that gives that aspect to where we can get some more student athlete and, and student body involvement as well as you know some of the local community are able to come out and actually see us compete which they don't get to do very often coach if i'm not at that meet i am just really lazy because i only live literally two blocks <laughs> west of that that spot so yeah. I, I i will definitely and when is the conference so the conference is actually on a great weekend it's uh, the morning of the homecoming game on october 21st so um, men start at 9.30. Um, I think it's women this year. Um, and, you know, the second race comes at 10.30. So it's, it's a great time. You know, we may be able to see the parade go by as we're, you know, we're, we're, we're in between uh, races. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Yeah. So I've got to ask you, I, I know that when Eastern hosted the Lone Star Conference Track and Field Championships, mm -hmm. Lone Star Conference provided pretty much most of the people. I mean, there were people that were lane judges and things of that nature. Right. So is the LSE providing the starter for the meet? Yeah, so they, it's kind of hand in hand. We got to do a lot of our, our own thing up front, you know, um, kind of put some stuff in, but the Lone Star does help with, with a few things. But majority of us, you know, we got to put it on as, as the host site, you know, making sure things are in order, securing timers and starters and things like that, so. You know, they do have a little bit of hand in, but we got to we got to do a lot of it you know, ourselves as well. Well, I'll, I'll let people in on a little bit of history. The last time that Eastern hosted the cross country championships, I was actually the official starter. Oh, so yeah. I had to wear my red shirt and I had to practice my set, 
yeah, you know, yeah. and get the timing down. And so that, that I'm okay. glad that it's awesome. more professional yeah. this time. <laughs> yeah, they're real particular at that. Okay, so. okay, as well they should be. Well, Coach, uh, as we were sitting here talking, the Greyhounds have actually had their first meet. Uh, you actually competed down in Las Cruces in the Laurie Ferguson Invitationals. How did things go? Um, it went really well. Um, I think our woman has, we're, we're a small group, but we're, we're a strong group. Um, I think we're more of a, a team aspect this year. Um, you know, we had um, one of our seniors, one of our returners, um, Kayla DeRosa. Um, she actually had, I think, about a six-second PR on our first meet. So we're, we're pretty excited about that. Um, we have somebody who's new. We didn't get her until the spring last year, Maritza Alvarez, who is going to be, you know, a, a solid one or two for us and, and, and works really hard and has a lot of potential um, coming from um, NIMI. Um, the NIMI Institute. So it's, it's, it's a program where we, we're pretty excited about it. You know, not as big as we want to be this year, but we have some solid young women in the program that we're excited about. Um, our men's team is super young. Um, being led by a freshman right now um, out of El Paso, um, who's a, a, a runner to watch this year in the LSC. So um, he went out and had a solid showing against some tough competition. Um, and just kind of earning his stripes. So we're we're pretty excited about the direction. We're really young, but old at the same time. So we have that unique dynamic. And, um, you know, this week kind of showed us where we're at, you know, and kind of had our young kids kind of have their first kind of taste of, you know, what it's going to be for us in this season. So it was, it was you know, we're pretty pleased with it. Did uh, you only had a few guys out for cross country last year or any of them back this year? Yeah, uh, we actually returned a couple of our upperclassmen, um, Ethan Woodrome, um, who's returning, uh, Ricky Diaz, who's been here as long as I've been here. He's probably been here a little bit longer than me. Um, he's returned in the program. And I think um, I think pretty much everyone else is is, is new, um, either transferred in or or freshman or we we got in the spring, so didn't have the opportunity to to run the cross country season. So um, everybody else is, is fairly new on that men's side. You talked about one young lady that's coming back from last year. Do we have any other returners? Yes, yes. Our, our fearless leader right now, Lauren Griego, who's um, going into her fifth year. She's taking a COVID year. And, and she's she's been tremendous from when I first got here to, to now. Um, she's in a tremendous leadership role for us. Um, it's vocal, and I'm sure you know her. And, and she's somebody who can talk and who also keeps – keeps everybody calm and relaxed, but also goofy and laughs. But um, as somebody who's leading the way for us right now in a lot of different areas. And um, we're just, we're just, we're happy to have her a part of the program and coming back and kind of being that, that senior leader leading our group for us. Yeah, I had to smile because Lauren was one of my advisees <laughs> here at Eastern New Mexico. And I swear she took every single class that I offered. Yeah. <laughs> so got to know that young lady very well. Yeah, yeah. she's, she's awesome. I mean, we're, like I said, I can't say how, how happy we are that she's she's leading our distance program. Of course, she's in a new position being a being a leader, um, as it take it took her some time to kind of move up in this program. Um, but coming in and, and being a, a grad a grad student now for us, um, leading our program, we're we're pleased with it and, and the direction that she's leading our group. You'd like to have the kids under your supervision year round, but uh, that's not the way college athletics work. Uh, they right. kind of uh, take their last classes in May and then they show up again in August. Right. Uh, were you pleased with where they came in? Were they kind of doing what they needed to do over the summer? Yeah, Coach Putnam is one of the guy, one of our assistant coaches. He's actually really working with the group, um, and it's kind of been leading the way for our training for our distance group. Um, who has gave nothing but great reports um, as far as like how they came in fitness wise um, and just being able to kind of observe that and, and see what our group is doing. You know, we're going to progress pretty quickly. You know, those early, uh, you know, training without a coach isn't the same um, as training with a coach. So we're always going to beat you up. Um, <laughs> and when you get back to campus, no matter how much you feel like you've done. So, you know, in spite of that, they, they, they've came in in decent shape and, and we're looking to really build off the year. I know that back in the day, and this is kind of dating myself because I'm, I'm talking like way back in the day, like <laughs> half a century ago when I was a distance runner, there was generally like an over distance part of the season mm -hmm. and then there was the interval training and then yeah. you kind of tapered towards the end. So how has the theory about coaching distance running changed over the years? I mean, it hasn't changed. There are some nuances with science and, and, and research that's coming out more. Um, you know, 
back in the day, it was just kind of mileage, 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 and, yep. and and they had some some techniques where VO2 max and things like that. Um, but there, it's a lot more intricate, and they've done the research now with you know testing people's heart rates and things like that and recovery. So um, it's still summer is still a big mileage time, you know, where you're you're building a base, you know, and you're trying to get the fitness in as much as you can before you come back. And then as we we get into the cross country season. It's it's still the same way. It's kind of still the same way, but there's you know there's some more data and things that we can kind of lean on now, you know, to to make sure that we're we're really getting the most out of the student athletes. It's the same, only better. Yeah, <laughs> for sure. <laughs> well, coach, uh, a pleasure to have you back for a second year, and good luck. And I uh, can't wait to see the kids. I I will not be able to see the first meet because I know I'm going to be broadcasting football that day in Washington, yeah. but. I am looking forward to seeing the yeah. LSC conference. Awesome. I'm we're, we're excited to have you, and, and we hope we got a great turnout. All right. Well, that is going to wrap up the interview segment of Sports Look. So what we'll do is we'll cover the set, and I'll finish up with an overtime right now. Last week, I talked about the fact that Greyhound Athletics had lost a longtime head coach, Carl Richardson. He was the head coach of Greyhound football when the Greyhounds won every single game in 1957, an undefeated season. Well, the guy that was the quarterback that year was a guy by the name of Buck Wilson. Tragically, we lost him this summer as well. Buck was a native of Clovis. He originally went to the University of New Mexico to play football. But he wanted to get married, and UNM had a policy back in those days that you couldn't be married and be on the football team. And because true love prevailed, he transferred to Eastern and led us to that undefeated season. Because I am a hopeless romantic, I love telling that story. Well, that will finish up in overtime, and that will finish up an episode of Sports Look. I'd like to thank my guests, Albert Flynn from Greyhound Rodeo, Josh Harden from Greyhound Cross Country, had a new floor director from the softball team, Ms. Ashley. So for all of those aforementioned people, this is Doc Elder saying, so long. <laughs>